Good evening. We are uh, starting the Master Plan Implementation Committee meeting for November 19th, 2020. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A section 18 and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the master plan implementation committee will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website at www.northandoverma.gov. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch the meeting may do so on their televisions by tuning to Comcast Channel 99 or Verizon Channel 28 or online at northandovercam.org. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the Town of North Andover website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. If the public would like to participate in public hearings, please email your question or comment prior to the meeting or during the meeting to A. Shapiro, that's A-S-H-A-P-I-R-O, at northandoverma.gov. The question comment will be read during the proceedings and responded to accordingly. All right. Uh, there we go. All right, we've got, so call to order, call the meeting to order. Mm -hmm. um, do we need to do attendance? Sure. Or if we need to. Okay. Yes, if we could do attendance and actually, um, you know what, uh, we always talk about the issue with uh, who's going to take meeting minutes. Um, Gene, I was thinking I'll ask Bernadette to do it this week. Don't you think that's okay? You're on mute, but yeah, I heard. Sorry, yes, I think it's fine. I... Okay, so the uh, collectively the community development office will handle the minutes this week. So everyone's off the hook. On and that. This, what, is, what is she, she'll take the video of this and yeah, yeah, we'll just, and, and frankly, you know, even if it was me doing the minutes, uh, that's what I would be doing too, is just okay. going off the video. Um, so with that, uh, yeah, Kelly, if you don't mind calling me or taking attendance, that'd be great. All right, uh, James Dowd. <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> Mute. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. I wish you could unmute other people on this, but we can't for some reason. Oh, really? They don't have the. Well, we see Jay and we he's see here. Jay. Jay is here. We'll come back. Meredith Barnes Cook? Here. Stan Limbert? Here. Sean McDonough? Here. John Strauss? Here. Uh, that is all the members of the Kelly Cormier here. That is, and that James Dowd. Here. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Hooray, hooray. Okay. That's, uh, that's all the members of the committee. That, so Holly is not present. Chris Nobly is not yeah, Chris present. is not present. And someone else. Who else? George, it's a nine, George it's a nine Kohler. Member. Oh, George Kohler. Yep. George Kohler. George Kohler. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so the first item on the agenda for this week is approval of the minutes. Did anyone have any comments or corrections, changes to the minutes? And we had two sets of minutes, as you can see, right. one from the meeting prior to this one. So I, uh, I move that we accept the minutes as presented for November 24th, 2020 and October 22nd, 2020. I'll second that. Okay. All right. So do a roll call vote. Do we have the minutes? Yeah. Uh, James Dowd. Yes. Meredith Barnes Cook. Yes. Stan Limpert. Yes. Sean McDonough. Yes. John Strauss. Yes. Kelly Cormier. I'm also yes. 
think that's everybody on the committee that's here. Is, is this the point in the meeting that where we would ask Andrew if he had gotten any public comment? Um, it could be at any time during the meeting because in theory, anybody can. Um, and I'm looking to see if we have any and we don't as of right now. All right. My suggestion would be that you add that as a, a regular item at the front of the meeting, right? Just so we remember to do that. Mm -hmm. sure. Right. We can do that. Sure. It's good enough. All Thank right. You. All right, so the third item on our agenda is uh, the prior to discussion regarding the prioritization of strategies uh, that we've all been looking at or ha had looked at a lot <laughs> um, in previous months. And Stan uh, had pulled together, I think, a framework of uh, around those strategies for us to take a look at. So, so Stan. And, Andrew, if you put that up, I, I just want to, there was a, um, presentation that was linked in the agenda. Uh, I don't know if any of you had a chance to look at it, but I'd like to just walk through that real quickly. Andrew's going to bring it up here, we hope, because he knows how to do that. I saw him do it. Give me one second here. I'm getting it figured out. <laughs> Okay, I'm not as smart as I look. Um, hold on a second. It's amazing that there's always challenges with this. We spend all day on Zoom calls or calls of this nature, and yet there it seems like every call mm -hmm. is a problem. Never fails. I just found it, so I think we're. Let me know if you're seeing. Are you guys seeing the slide prior to yes. prioritizing yes. master plan strategies? Yes, we are. Yes. Yeah. Um, so just for for anyone who's watching the meeting, we are looking at. Um, the deck that is in the agenda uh, linked on uh, number three in the agenda. Okay, so, so Dan, I've just, yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, I'm just gonna run through this real quickly and not dwell on a lot of this. So we went through some amount of effort to look at uh, costs and benefits. And I just wanted to say uh, in passing that I appreciated everybody, everybody's help in, uh, in uh, coming up with benefits for the strategies. I thought we did a, we all did a pretty good job with that. So I think that was really good. Next slide, please. Um, one of the things that I was, that interested me as I started looking through the data itself was sort of various ways to look at uh, the various strategies. One thing I thought that was interesting was the, the number of strategies that were in each of the, if you will, the elements, the groups, um, the bulk of them turned out were, were in transportation um, and public facilities. Uh, so that's something we'll we'll probably need to be thinking about when we get to them um, to think about what we want to do about a number of those things, particularly in transportation. Uh, I was surprised that the distribution was that skewed when I looked at the data. Next slide, please, Andrew. Um, each of the strategies has a uh, sort of a, a cross tab to another, any other element. And a, a third of the strategies were all standalone. That is, they weren't linked to any other area, any other element, if you will. However, more than half were linked to one or two other areas. So the implication there is that as we get to them, we'll need to be looking not only at the the area, the element in which the 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 strategy falls, but also the other areas that may be impacted by or need to contribute to the strategy. Next slide, please. The other thing I that I found particularly interesting, and we'll have to talk about this at some length, is the so-called so local government leadership assignment is essentially the group that's been given responsibility for the strategy. As you can see, almost two thirds of the strategies are assigned to only three groups, DPW, community development, that, that is to say, Andrew and Jean, and um, the planning board, uh, the BO, the board, the select board and the conservation commission and community services 
has the smaller amounts. But I think this is important for us to sort of keep in mind as we start thinking about ranking the strategies because uh, we don't want to necessarily overload these departments who already have full-time jobs and stuff to do. So um, that's something we'll have to be thinking about as we start to get to the ranking is uh, we may have to take our time picking out ranking and then uh, passing on various strategies so we don't uh, so we give each of these leadership groups a chance to actually start to take on these strategies. So just something to be thinking about. Next slide, please. Um, in the same way that each strategy, it falls in an element, but may be linked to other elements, each strategy has uh, a lead organization, but it also has other organizations that may be involved in its execution. And as you can see, not surprisingly, the same organizations are also linked to more than one strategy, DPW, economic development, community development, uh, uh, and the planning board. So these are all areas that we also need to be thinking about too, because again, it's not going to help anyone if we try to assign too many strategies to one of these groups and they just can't they just can't handle it that's not going to help anyone so the other thing that's interesting here is that uh, other groups start to show up like zba shows up here as a partner to uh, a number of the strategies you won't be surprised plan uh, zoning and other things so um, while they're not assigned a lead role a leadership role um, they have a supporting role for some of the strategies. All things that we'll, we can think about and talk about as we start getting to this. Next slide, please. Okay, so then I, I have been working. I, I, I don't want to use the term struggling. I've been, I've been working to try to come up with various ways to think about how to rank the strategies. So I, I'll give you four different thoughts on how that might happen. These are not necessarily mutually exclusive either, but uh, they're just diff different ways of looking at a ranking. This slide takes a very abbreviated view at looking at the top strategies by element. An element is like economic development or housing or land use or transportation or public facilities. So this is one view of how that might look. And within each of these areas, um, I took one, it, it, probably a small number because mostly I was limited by the size of the slide, but I took the top one element in a strategy in each of these elements and put that on the slide. So that's one way we could take a look. We could take each of the elements and pick the top one or two strategies and start with those as the strategies would look at first in terms of trying to set a priority. Next slide, please. So we could just do a straight uh, prioritization ranking by benefit. And so that's what this is. This is just ranked purely on benefit and for equal benefits, there they're then ranked or sorted in descending order by cost. So the one with the highest benefit, but the lowest cost would come first. I'm sorry, Sam, what's the difference between this slide and the previous slide? I think I just the, lost. The, the, the last slide, if you can go back, Andrew, the last slide. By element. Okay. Yes, by element. So this is the highest benefit, the, the strategy with the highest benefit in each element. Okay. This is just ranked purely by benefit. Okay. So, so transportation is going to be busy if we on the benefit column, okay. right? And within each, within uh, strategies that have equal benefits, they're then sorted by cost, right? So you'll look at the at the first two. The top benefit has the lowest cost. The next one has a higher cost, et cetera, et cetera. So that's this sort. Um, next slide, please. This is the sort, uh, 
the, the, looking at it from the opposite point of view, which is lowest cost, highest benefit, right? Uh, this, I think, is probably the least useful view because um, it doesn't necessarily, I, I don't think some of the things that we thought uh, that seem to be low cost are necessarily that beneficial. So I think this might be the least uh, useful way to look at rankings, but, but it's another way. Uh, next slide. This then is um, similar to the ranking by element. This is ranking by leadership group, i.e. the group that's responsible for the strategy, each of the strategies. And so what it does is it takes each of the groups and it finds the one or two uh, strategies with the biggest, with the largest benefits. And that's what you, you see here. And again, you know, of course, I just restricted this for the purposes of squeezing it all on one slide. I mean, you know, there's much more data, but I just, uh, cut it down to this. So that's it. And next slide. Um, so here's a, that's this slide just sort of summarize things that I've said. A lot of the strategies are, com are, are all concentrated in certain areas. A lot of groups have, you know, a small number of groups that have a lot of responsibilities. Uh, many of the strategies really don't overlap with one another. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Does that make them easier to work on or not? Um, and we've, you know, we still haven't had our discussion about how we all uh, came up with the benefits um, and, you know, did we all use a similar approach? So that's a discussion we could also have as we get, as we start getting into the details. Next slide, please. Okay, so this slide change it could change from day to day. I every day I think of a different set of things we could be thinking about. But let me start with these. You know, first we're talking about still ranking uh, the strategies by something, by either element or by the group responsible or by something. Um, and, and you know how to really do that in a logical way. One approach might be to say, okay, let's take each of the seven elements, the seven areas, uh, land use, housing, transportation, et cetera, et cetera. And the two, the two or three people that were assigned to each of those groups, pick the top uh, one or two strategies in their area that they think are the most important. They wouldn't necessarily, in my mind, have to be ones that had the largest benefit of the lowest cost. It could be based on people's opinions about what is most important or what would be most, what would have the biggest impact if it was worked on first. And then we could have a discussion as a group about those, num some number of items. It would be no more, let's say we each picked two by per area, that would be no more than 14 strategies that we would have a discussion about. And uh, the discussion could be something like each of the groups, each of the pair of us or the three of us who have uh, worked in that area, sort of present why they picked those one or two strategies as their top. And then we could have a discussion about that and go through all seven areas, seven elements, and uh, see if that makes sense. Then if that sort of started to make sense, we could look at the groups responsible for those and further, maybe further limit that because it might turn out that those strategies all related to like one or two groups, like, you know, community and economic development or uh, DPW or something, and we might further want to restrict how many strategies we pass along to those groups so we don't overload them. But, but that my suggestion would be, at least at this point, that that could be a next step for us is to each of the groups for each of the elements, the areas, 
pick one or two of the strategies that they think would be most important, most impactful. And they could be the ones, of course, with the, the highest benefit. Um, but it could be something else, you know, not necessarily the highest, but a reasonably high benefit and something else that made them stand out. And it, then we come up with a short list and we have a meeting and have a discussion about that and go through, you know, those items, those strategies and see what we all think, see if we can all agree on those. And then if we do, uh, the next step would be that second to last bullet, which is an approach to then reaching out to the so-called stakeholders, the leadership, the people who are responsible for each of the strategies and figuring out a way to now start working with them to you know, explain why we think this is important, These, this strategy is important and asking them what we can do to help uh, them uh, start to work on this strategy if they, you know, and it's possible they're already doing something along this line. So, you know, that would be a, a next step after we arrive at some decision about what short list of strategies we're going to start out with. And then um, we might take one or two of the strategies and work it all the way through to the point at which something was being done. So, you know, the the task had been taken on and is now being actively worked by one of the groups, the leadership groups. Um, so anyway, so that's, those are some thoughts. Those are some ideas about how we might proceed from here. And I, it seems to me that our challenge is to try to start with a smaller group of things and get going so we can show some results rather than just continuing to sort of flog 103 items, even though, you know, we would all readily admit that Gene and Andrew would tell us that some number of those 20 or 20% 20, 20 of those maybe even are already in work or something's happening or they're done or something. But having said that, um, so these are some thoughts on, on how we might proceed. Questions? Um, Stan, um, and I'll, 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 um, Meredith chime in here, but speaking solely on the transportation elements, yep. um, because of the sheer volume that you, um, in reviewing those, um, with the, amongst us, what we found is there are a number of interconnected elements, a good number that, for instance, pertaining to the main street redevelopment. Yep. Um, which obviously there's already the ball, the ball's already rolling. There's an opportunity to basically get a bunch of answers right away on that. Um, and it's just a matter of meeting out with, um, with the stakeholders just to get information on our end. And then we can kind of finalize where in, on the priority list and whether we should you know, how much focus do we need to? And that way we can, it's a potential for us to pare that list way down. Sure. Yeah, no, I think that's, I think that would be great. I, I you know, I, uh, others should, should uh, weigh in here, but, but certainly one, uh, another way to look at this is we now, let's say we have seven subcommittees, right? And, you know, you and Meredith, the, the, the example, just keep pursuing transportation and see how far you can get with that, right? Uh, you know, just, and just keep working it until you you can come back with a set of additional recommendations to the committee to say, we went out and we talked to whoever it was, the, the group that's doing the downtown revitalization thing or DPW or some combination of groups. And here's what we've now arrived at that these, you know, of the 28 strategies assigned to transportation, the transportation element, you know, 10 of the 10 of them all sort of fold together and they're being, I don't know, some of them being taken care of or they're part of the revitalization, I don't know, whatever it would be. So that would be an ideal solution. I mean, I think that would be an ideal approach. And if if all of us uh could do the same in, in each of these element areas and sort of take that on as as though we were like the subcommittees. Um, and start to work them, I think that would be good. Um, 
Is that, a, I don't know, does everybody think that might be a practical approach to starting out with this question? I think that's a, a great approach just to kind of get things going, right? Like get us moving. Um, I, yeah. I think kind of in conjunction with that, I think if we also, because one of the things, I think it was your, you know, the fourth bullet you had, Stan, you know, kind of discussing, discussing an approach um, for engaging with, with this different stakeholder groups. I right. think it's, if we can, it sounds like if we push along where we know we can in, in those subgroups, you know, John and Meredith talking, using transportation as the example, let's just kind of cut through it and get yep. some information and get moving. But I do think there's value to developing, you know, this is a 20 year problem, right? The, what's the framework for interacting and um, you know, working with all of those different stakeholder groups. You know, where, where, you know, are we, are we collaborating with them on a six month basis, yearly basis on priorities? Is there, you know, where do, how do we get into, hey, we think this one's important for 2030. Is this something that you already have in your plan? Is this, do we have the conversations around, hey, what can we do to help push that this is important to the master plan? So you need budget for doing these things. Is that part of our, what's that framework that we work in? Yeah. So I think, if we can get that defined, you know, have someone kind of work or a group of people maybe break off and work on what's that framework look like? Like, what do we want to do? What do we not want to do? You know, just so we, and then we can kind of all come back together and kind of catch up and make sure we're operating that way, adjust if necessary, sort of what. Okay, say, so can you sort of say those two or three sentences again? What things do we, what, what sort of things do you think we need to define is that we want to do? And what sort of things do we need to define that we don't want to do? Yeah, just like or within um, and we're, with working with the stakeholder groups, okay. things okay. that you know, just um, you know, okay. how how frequently do we work with people? You know, how because it's, we're setting priority, we're asking to have priorities set, right? And we need to work with groups that yeah. function well, independently and have their own priorities already. So, here, kind of, where does this fit in? Absolutely. So, so we have, of course, we have our own test case group staring at us right and i every time i we have these meetings i think of gene and i think i just don't want to give her any more work i you know it makes me feel bad even to think about doing that so you know I, we, I we that, gene, yeah. we've got the perfect example of of so okay so you've got you know eight bazillion items on this list how do we do something about that how do we so, you know can I offer, do you guys mind if I offer uh, a comment? No, please. Go, so, please. Go for it. A couple things. One, just for administrative purposes, I just want to acknowledge uh, Holly Williams and uh, George Kohler are now here. So just want to make sure yep. that's recognized for the, for the minutes when we get that done. Um, and so here's what I envision. I think that, uh, first of all, I want to thank Stan for putting together a thoughtful presentation. I thought it was great information. I think it's you know, it was very well analyzed, and I think we have a good, a lot to uh, <clears throat> to work off of based on what he put together. The way I see it is, your interactions with stakeholders are more so on the level of understanding the level of work that has already been done, or that needs to be done, uh, or if nothing's been done, and sort of gauging that information. So it's more in an information uh, collection capacity versus a okay, now what? How do we help you get these projects done? I think the way that these projects get done, your vessel to do that is through uh, the Board of Selectmen. You go to the Selectmen with, here is the here are the status of the projects. You know, as far as the you know the, the conversations we've had with stakeholders and reports that we've gotten from staff. Here are um, here are the priorities that we have. We we've, we've prioritized each of these strategies. Uh, so given that this is a high priority and we know in talking to DPW, for instance, that not a lot has been done on this priority, we would ask that we would want to tell the Board of Selectmen, hey, we think you should prioritize this. And then it's up to the Board of Selectmen to act, in my opinion, or for town staff to act uh, to decide, okay, are, is, is budget going to be put toward this? Or is a grant going to be sought to get the, these projects done and, and fulfill a, uh, a strategy? I mean, um, that's, that's the way I see it. I don't know if... Um, Gina, do you, would you agree with that, or if, or? Yeah, yeah. So effectively, and I mean, the way it's kind of playing out the last few years is the selectmen are setting their policy guide, and they're establishing their goals, and then annually in the annual report, each of us have to establish goals for ourselves in our department, and those goals we always look to align with what the board of selectmen's goals are, and so 
everybody's goals, I think, over the last couple of years have been based on the master plan. I mean, we're trying to get them done and, and we pick the ones that we think we can achieve. And so currently um, we're working on a wireless small cell policy for the Board of Selectmen to establish. And there's a goal related to wireless technology in here. We just applied for a grant for a land area plan for the Route 125 corridor stretch. There's, there's a goal in here for there. It, they're not necessarily in the Board of Selectmen's policy, but we have our individual goals as well. So the downtown improvement master plan is one of my goals. Um, and I think you're, you're spot on in terms of better assessing what is being worked on and what stage it is. I think Andrew and I try to quantify some of those, but we, we obviously don't have the into ones that were listed for the historical commission or historical societies to start working with the Stephen Schoolage place and, and things like that. So we don't, we definitely don't have all the information and I think there's a lot more to investigate. Um, but I think, I think that's the, start, in my opinion, that's the starting point. Where are we on the ones that exist today so that you can understand which ones need to be prioritized? So, or have already been prioritized by the administration. Okay, so then well, after the yeah. point, it's then hand those priority, what we think, I'd be looking at the, handing that list of priorities, the strategies prioritized to the Board of Selectmen for them to go, yay, nay, you know, may, maybe make some adjustments, but then they would use, take the prior, those strategies and prioritize them as they see fit. And then all of the other departments would work from those and it would cascade from there. So I just want to make sure I understand that. I guess, Andrew, my question would be, um, where does the town manager fit into all of this? Would well, we not take this for the town manager question? Well, I why, think would, that, why would we not go there first? Well, the town manager yeah. reports to the board of selectmen. Oh, I get that. So, 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 I mean, in a sense, you know, it's part and parcel of the same process, in my opinion. If if you have a productive conversation with the board of selectmen, or if they read a report that you um, put together in, in one of your future uh, progress reports that you're you're doing on a quarterly basis, and you lay out what your priorities are in a very clear manner, and they respond positively to that, then I can assure you that the town manager will be interested in helping them. Oh yeah, no, I advance those priorities. So I, I I think, but but there's nothing wrong with engaging the town manager. I think. That can certainly remember the town manager is one of the stakeholders identified uh, in this, you know, as as being responsible for some of these strategies. So, to the extent that this body is going to be engaging various stakeholders on progress being made, I mean, town manager can be one of those stakeholders that you're engaging to figure out, okay, where are you on some of these priorities? Uh, should we be, you know, should we be suggesting that we work on, you know, certain uh, this certain strategy that you're responsible for sooner than later? Are there funding sources that we can identify to get some of these strategies that you're responsible for done? So, I, you know, I think that she can certainly be part of that process. But you, you report, you do not, re, you do not report to the board of selectmen. I report to the town managers. Right. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, I think it is here. important. All right. Well, first thing I want to say is thank you, Stan. This was great, and I know a lot of time and effort went into that. And thank you for bringing us kind of all together with a common thing to look at and discuss tonight. So thank you for that. Um, I do think it's important to talk to the stakeholders and just kind of get where their roadmap is, right? They've all dumped their information into this. This kind of came from, you know, they were the genesis for the master plan and now we're looking to implement it. So if we were to say we want, I'm just going to make something up, you know, a stoplight here and PW has it in their master plan, but for 10 years from now, and we think it needs to be done now, I think it's important to understand where, what their vision is to some extent, because they already have a little bit of a roadmap. I mean, I'll, you know, I can independently speak for the youth center because I'm involved in that, you know, Rick has a time frame for the youth center expansion. It's in his goals and he will give you a year that he plans on that being done. Um, so he already, if we were to speak to him individually, he'd say, this is when I see this happening. So if we were to split, slate that for 21, he would tell you I have it slated for this year, but if we, you know what I mean? So I think it's important kind of have an idea of where they see this going. Now, of course, we can weigh in as town people, and I think that's what we're here to do, to say, well, you know what, I think this is actually way more important because this is what the community at large really needs right now. We need this more than that, and that's the community at large, which is what we are. But I think it is critical to, um, as Stan, you, you pointed out, the subcommittees, you know, to kind of at some point touch base with what I'm going to call the stakeholders, the people that are running this. So. Does, does that make sense? 
I think that's, so. that's kind of what I'm getting at is we as say, for instance, again, just the, the transportation subcommittee for lack of a better uh -huh. term here, we've identified a couple items that we need additional information, just information from. Yeah. Uh -huh. Where are you, where, where do you see, where is this in, in the DPWs? Yeah. So the question is for the three of us on the transportation subcommittee, how do we voice those questions? Right. We go through the mechanism to get that to the stakeholders and get it, and get an answer back. No, I agree. So, what, uh, Andrew? What What's your thought on that? How should this committee interact with the various, you know, department heads and folks in these organizations to not be a nuisance, but try to get information from them? Yeah, I, I think there's a couple ways that we could do it, and I, I'm also looking to Gene to smack me around if, if what I'm saying doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Uh, but, but there's a couple ways we can do this. Uh, it can be, you know, since, for instance, a lot of these priorities, um, for instance, are related to like transportation and a lot of them feed back to like DPW. Um, you know, I think, you know, having either, uh, an individual, like Gene and I can help facilitate a meeting between Jim Stanford and John Borgesi, uh, the, you know, the head of the, the heads of the, that department with, uh, you know, assigned subcommittee members of this group to have a, a, a conversation about status of projects. Um, or, you know, it could be, I don't know how willing or not they'd be able to do this, but I'm sure maybe it's a larger conversation with a larger group that you can invite them to a future meeting to have a discussion in front of the whole committee. And it could just be an open-ended discussion, or you could have pointed questions ready to go as far as where are we on this project or how do we advance the goal on some of these strategies. So I think it's either or. Um, you know, a one-off meeting uh, that Gene and I can help facilitate or Dan can help facilitate um, or inviting one or more of those stakeholders to uh, a future meeting and they can be part of the process in a public forum. I like that first idea, Andrew. I thought it was great. Yeah. Like, just at least yeah, for the, agree, yeah. the, that kickoff, and it might be something, depending on the size of the number of strategies, right? You might be able to knock it off in one call or transport, you know, some of them have a lot more. So there might be, multi you know, multiple calls just to kind of, dig through yeah. status on all of you. I think each one will be a little bit different, but it'd be great to have those initial conversations facilitated. And then whether you have, you know, you continue to be on the rest of them or it can be more ad hoc. I mean, that's, you know, your calls to kind of how the, those facilitate going forward. But I think that would be a great idea because we can kind of get pushing through and stick with our seven subcommittees. And, and work yeah, that's, that makes sense at least. And it would also help uh, begin to establish some sort of contact with the the, as Holly said, the stakeholder departments, groups, so that we're, you know, they know we exist and that we're doing stuff and, you know, to they might expect to hear from us at some point. And, and also to, you know, uh, to, you didn't exactly say it this way, John, but the point is, you know, how best can we help you? How best can we, you know, set the priorities and rank some of these things to make it something you can do something with so you know there's also that you know asking them how we can be most helpful you know that's a really good point because there might be some nuances that obviously that the town departments know about you know some of these things that they're like no that doesn't affect just 10 people that affects 10,000 people or half the town and there might be just nuances that we didn't know or didn't see so yeah. that might I be mean, a great way just to get yeah. more information to make sure we fully understand I mean, and, and every time, every time we have this meeting, I, I I'm always, I, I'm, I'm often compelled to think about the fact of being able to do something I just know I can't do, which is to lock myself in a room with Gene, socially distanced, at, 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 with masks and stuff, and just, you know, have her tell me element, element by element, what's going on. And I'll just write that all down and I'll, you know, I'll just take notes on every single thing and she'll tell me everything that's going on. And then we'll know sort of, we'll, we will have gotten that information all down on a piece of paper and we'll know at least where all that stuff's at and we can move on from there. But like you say, Gene, there's, you know, I would, I would, I'm willing to guess that you have information on half, at least 50 of the hundred things, uh, strategy. Stand, stand. This is George. Yeah. George, I'd like to suggest instead of you sitting down with Gene and going over all 103, each of the seven sub each of the subcommittees would have a separate call with Gene and they would go over their elements. I mean their strategies. 
it's, that's another approach too. It's uh, yeah, but again, you know, this is all, you know, so I'm a volunteer. Jean has a paying job and the town's got very strong expectations I, for what she's doing for work. So the fact that, you know, we may want, you know, 40 hours of her time is nice, but not going to happen. So, right. you so, know. I think there's 17 ways we can crack the, you know, bake this cake, crack this egg, whatever it is. Okay. It, does anyone not like, I really, Andrew, I really like the first one that you proposed. If I, I think it a mix of maybe John and Andrew. If we, we're in our 17, you know, seven sub teams. Andrew and Jean, if you can facilitate that conversation and that, you know, we, with, and it's just the people from the sub teams from the committees that meet with them. And, you know, I think we've got to have crisp objectives for those meetings, right? We're yep. asking for yep. these people, what, what's our objectives? I mean, you know, one or two bullets, like, what are we really going to get through? And we just, we churn through them. And then if there's the interesting pieces and parts, right, then we, then the subcommittee brings them back to this meeting. I get, I get my, my question, my follow on question would just be, are you looking to do the stakeholder dis, uh, meetings as part of your prioritization process? Or are you doing the prioritization process first and then coming to the stakeholders to ask about, okay, we prioritize these things, we look at, you know, and, then, and then let's say it's two, the top two transportation related uh, strategies that you wanna cover, you wanna find out what the, what the status of those issues are. Or, or are you going to the stakeholders to figure out what you should prioritize? If you had asked me that question at the beginning of the meeting. Sorry, uh, sorry, Kelly. I, I think I think in reaching out, Andrew, we can get a lot of information that's going to tell us. All right, a lot of this stuff's already in motion. We don't really have to rank or or, or prioritize, or the priority level can be you know way down because it's an action. We don't, and so now we can focus solely on items that are ahead of us and where they should be. Okay, but I do think, uh, and if I could just offer the suggestion, I do think going in with a preconceived notion that could very that could be very fungible, could change on a dime. A preconceived notion about what you'd want to prioritize as one, two, three, four, might be a good idea. Just so you could figure it out, and if we discover, which we have already, right, exactly, which we have, those, okay, right? yeah. So yep, yep. I think that's something we can share. I think we got to realize it, it. We it is what it is, right? It's it was our first th our first throw, second throw at the dartboard. Um, but I think we've got to go in it, and if we can talk to to John's point, not not sharpen that pencil anymore, if something's already done, or we can look at it. So <laughs> what I look at, at least, I'm sorry, Jean. I'm sorry. I just wanted to add that I think um, I, I think John's right. I think as you investigate these and talk to the division heads, you're going to find out there's a lot in motion. And and when you say we want to prioritize this, it's probably going to be for next year <laughs> because we've already have all our assigned goals that. I will assure you are in alignment with the master plan already. So I think you'll be able to check off a lot and update status of those projects. But when you talk prioritization, it may be for next year, which then the, if, if the selectmen are in agreement, that'll probably become part of their goals for the town. And then everybody writes goals to for themselves to advance those. Um, that, right, being, so that being said, Andrew, I think it would probably be helpful if this is the direction they're going to go in to try to reach out to individual department heads and schedule meetings that maybe Melissa can send an email to everybody, just kind of giving them a heads up and just say, you know, if you guys want to target Tuesday afternoons, we work to four. So I don't know what you're, if you're flexible enough that you can start at about, I'm sorry, we work till six. So if you could schedule your meeting sometime between four or start at five to six, I think you'll have better success at kind of meeting with these guys. Um, and for what whatever information you could provide them ahead of time so that they can kind of get a look at these different goals and strategies that you know you're going to be asking them about will help them get to prepared. That's a great. So maybe we provide um, Andrew, we provide you with a you know what's the objectives of the meetings, right? What you know, high level we're talking about reviewing the strat just that section of the strategies from the plan. I think we could share in advance the priorities we already put on there. And then what we're looking for is to understand, you know. It, we, what are we really? I guess what are we asking, John? You you're, you were thinking about is it progress to date? One's already underway. Change of priority. What were you thinking? So uh, I'll throw out the example. I know next month we have there's a, a meeting scheduled, public meeting scheduled for the mass for the Main Street redevelopment. Yeah. Um, presumably there's plans on a lot of what's going to be presented at that meeting is going to answer a lot of the questions I have about transportation goals relative. To, Particularly the Main Street redevelopment. A lot of the a lot of that information is going to come out of that meeting. So I don't know if we wait until then or we get an advance on on that information or whatnot. But 
Um, like I said, seven or eight elements pertain strictly to that project and can be answered right away. And that allows us to focus on everything else that we on the, on the element list there. I mean, I think it's it's fair to go in with here's here's the strategies that we're looking at the next 20 years. Here's the priorities we have on them. Can we talk about which ones have you already started? And maybe it's a cherry pick. Maybe it's not through the whole list in the first meeting. I think it might depend on what, what group it is, right, as to how many you've got on your list, um, and how many other things that aren't on the plan are already a priori are rightly a priority. And then we just start going through it. And then it, to forget who said it, but that builds a relationship too, right? Here, what is it? We can figure out where we go from there. So I think that's. I think, John, I think it's a great idea if we do that, right? And that's really not about setting our priorities. It's about creating the, the, the connection, understanding where things are at, and maybe scratching a few things off the list. Yeah. So so that makes it sound like we take each of the areas, each of the elements, the seven areas, and we just you know do a sort by what we've called benefits and then talk to them about that, you know, without getting more you know, without spending a lot more energy on it than that and just have that discussion and see what they think, right? See what they think. And to your point, John, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of these things are already work in progress. So, you know, we can, you know, note that and then um, sort of take it from there. So knowing that we're approaching year end and I don't know about you guys, but most of my day job people are on vacation for the rest of the year. Um, what's our kind of our target for getting all these done? What's reasonable to try by the end of the year? Is this by in a month? What's I'm just trying to think of? Yeah, I think um, you know it's definitely gonna be hard to do anything in the next obviously couple of weeks. So I'd say if we can we can target trying to get meetings in early December. If people think that's if that's realistic yeah. for folks in, yeah. on this committee, um, so first two weeks to December, and then obviously we're going to enter another uh, you know inaccessible period when we get closer to Christmas and New Year's. But um, yeah, I'd say first two weeks of December, if we can make some meetings happen, we can definitely work with everyone on setting yeah. you up with the, the appropriate stakeholders on our end. Okay. You know, but but the other the other thing thing we need to think about in terms of the, you know, the divisions of department heads is, you know, they're going to be moving into budgets too very quickly after the first of the year. So they're not going to want to spend a lot of time with us when they have to work on their own budget so that's well, and i don't and, and to be honest with you i don't think you're going to get a lot of time anyway not to say that you, you they, they that people aren't going to be um willing to answer questions but i'm just saying you know i'm thinking meetings should last like an hour yeah you yeah know what i mean yeah. and you're gonna get, you get a crack at that and yeah. then if we need to come back at a later date you know in you know in the next month or two so be it. That's fine. But I think you know you're looking at like people giving you an hour of their time. I'm, I'm thinking yeah, no, realistically. I, yeah, no, I I certainly agree with that. Yeah. yeah. With, with maybe some like follow up email or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but there could be some exception. You know, less or more, right? But like, yeah, let's target right. an hour. What do we? We're not trying to solve the world, and honestly, we're not managing what they're doing. We're just trying to understand on an objective. Are you 100% done? Are you 50? Or is this you know zero? I mean, it's almost kind of what we're what we're asking. Just so we know if we need to even put it in our purview of a priority. But I, I think, you know, from my perspective, just based on everything we've talked about, I think having these conversations, continuing to look at the prioritization process, I think that each subcommittee should try to maybe target one or two things that they really think are kind of glaring issues that the town has not yet addressed and put those forward in the next um, report to the Board of Selectmen to say, these are the things that in talking with, you know, amongst each other, with Gene and Andrew, and with other stakeholders that we think are achievable and um, have not yet been sufficiently addressed by the town to, um, you know, to meet the master plan's goals and priorities, and we want to, we'd like to focus on these things. So, so, Andrew, it may be something that needs to be budgeted for for the next fiscal year, and that would be good to identify now. I mean, the timing's right. If if right. you find one of those glaring items that you think absolutely needs to be addressed. It's probably going to cost money, and now would be the time to try to get support to include it in a budget. Yeah, so yeah, that goes through the concept of right. We've got our list. If we have these meetings, we have our list of priorities. We meet with the. Let's see, we break out into sub team. At the end of the goal of those sub teams meetings, is you have all these strategies. There's ten. You know which ones are already being worked, which ones aren't. 
right? Is it going to significantly or, or not worked? And you're like, oh, wait, this one was the most important one on my list and hasn't been started yet. Then that becomes what we have to, when we look at our priority list, if we have it high, yeah. it's still high. And that's what we'd report to your your point, Andrew. When we go to the board of selectmen, we'd go, hey, here's the ones we hear that we feel based on our methodology, the plan, our most important these five aren't ha- are, haven't been started yet. Here's what we, what we know so far. These are underway. Do with it what you will, right? That's sort of what we're, I heard from you, doing, Andrew, right? We're doing quarterly reporting. Is that right or monthly? Quarterly. 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 Okay. I mean, that's, that, is, that's what you were thinking, right? I just tried to restate. Make yeah. Sure I understand yeah, what you said, I right? so. yeah. yeah, that would make, yeah, that makes complete sense to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so we're going to have this. We're going to do these meetings. So in order to make it happen, we need some. We need to be crisp in our ask, right? We need to be crisp in what, especially if we're going to ask um, the town manager to send out an email, you know, to them just to kind of give a heads up. Here's what we're doing. Um, the objectives. We need to be prepared for those meetings with the objectives list. Know which ones are some may be more important than others, depending on how long the list is. And at the end, we walk away from those meetings. You know, our jobs as part of those subcommittees is: do we understand where each one of them is at, and do we can we also say that from that we should be able to go important ones either are aren't being worked and then if, at some point if someone could provide you know me Jean, and dan with the breakdown of who's representing different areas different subcommittee areas uh, that'd be helpful because what i'll do is I, I guess step one is getting that town manager communication out step two would be following up with um you know uh stake the relevant stakeholders and introducing them via email to you all uh, but on a separate basis, you know, per, you know, the breakout of each, um, yeah. you know, subject area. Yeah. And then we'll get meetings on the books with each each of them. Yeah. So let me go back. What I'll do is, Andrew, I'll go back and update that uh, assignment table that I generated when we did the uh, benefits assignments and add, okay. add Sean's name in there. So and send that back to you. Same. Everything else will stay the same, except Sean will substitute for Lou. Where Lou appeared, so um, will that will that suffice for your purposes? I, yeah, sure, absolutely. We'll bring you into the fold, Sean. Here you come. You're coming in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see what Lou was assigned. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He had all the hard stuff, Sean. So yeah. I'm sure. Well, yeah, sure. He had all so the wasn't hard that that mean, right. so I'm sure he got that he got loaded up. <laughs> okay, all that right. sounds good. Right. In general, are are most people available between four and six, or no? Mm-hmm. No. Yes. Yeah, I, okay. I am. In general, it's going to depend. Yeah, it's going to depend on the day. I can farther out. I can stick it on a calendar. The better, but yeah. I think what we might do is uh, Gene, myself, and Dan might divide and conquer as far as like who we work with to set up meetings for. Do you think, yeah. Gene, oh, that okay. makes sense? Is like yeah. you know, like if one of us deals with getting meetings set up at DPW, another sets up meetings with yeah. youth and rec, you know, whoever it might be. Yep. Or planning board or whomever, right? right. I mean, since so right stuff like that. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I assume that assignment list was had a focus on each person's, at least from my perspective, from a conservation perspective, kind of led towards the open space and, and items like that. Uh, we tried, but since you're now new, it was Lou, and I didn't, you know. So we'll see. We'll see. I'll go back and look at the list, and if it's not right, we can adjust it. So. Okay. It's not, nothing's cast in concrete, right? We're good. So, okay. All right. Does anybody have anything else in prioritization? We can, we're, we're an hour in. We can move on to the next topic. I think I'm good. All right. Um, <clears throat> so then it's uh, topic number four, continued discussion regarding committee's mission statement and duties. So we talked quite a bit about it last week. I think we, we lots of different ideas. We didn't reach any consensus. Um, has that, I don't, did anyone, I think where we had left it was if anyone had any thoughts or ideas to kind of email it around to Andrew, to me, to anyone else, or called out, anyone have any inputs or thoughts or any great light bulbs on that? Uh, I, I, my question, uh, Kelly, would be, were there any sort of things that you thought were open items relative to the mission statement, anything that we had discussed that you thought needed some resolution? Like- yeah, there was two, I mean, two items. Like if you if you click on the attachment in the agenda, there was two things I, th- I think that were key and to every other people, please speak up. 
um, that were d two different approaches. Um, one had to do with, um, <clears throat> uh, if you look at the bottom of there's an option one, option two, right? Um, not had the, that the committee does not have, uh, d should not and does not have the intended authority to change, edit, or update the master plan. The other option was, is that, you know, is that, is that what we, what we're setting for our duties or do we want to put, uh, propose a master plan amendments for approval based on a fine process? So it's really change or don't change with all the, we talked about the nuances around that. That was one piece. Then the other piece that was still, we were discussing was, would the board get involved? <clears throat> I'm sorry, the committee get involved in doing um, some form of uh, report rating against the, the strategies for different large projects or develop, and I might, might not be using the right terms here, but large projects coming before the town. We talked a lot about how do we, you know, the process around how would we define large? What does that mean? What type because we, we would need some type of criteria, but if there is a large um, project uh, becoming forward as, as the master plan committee, do we, you know, rate or review that project against the master plan strategies, just as an information point for people in the town? I think those are the two things that we we talked about, and people were going. We didn't come to any conclusion. Um, so really, just I would, if people have any thoughts about that or had any more discussion, it'd be great to hear. If what people feel one way or the other, or people don't honestly don't don't care. When, um, when we had this discussion last time, I had been thinking one thing, but I sort of changed my mind. Um, you know, I'd been thinking about projects like Amazon and Royal Crest, and you know, and the mass and the master plan and our implementation efforts. And I'd been thinking that maybe we should at least take a look at those projects in light of what the master plan was trying to do. I've since had second thoughts on that whole idea and thought that uh, those projects are so complex to begin with that um, I don't think it's even practical for us to Try to wade into that stuff you know like royal crust is as complicated a project as may have ever been done in this town ever um so i'm just wondering whether that's something we should really even be thinking about getting involved with we could of course if someone asked us uh to think about it that would be one thing but you know barring requests for us to do something <clears throat> I'm sort of thinking uh, of going back to the position that Andrew was sort of, I think, advocating, which was, let's just stick to the 103 strategies and do the best we can with those and be done with it. So that's my thought on big projects, personally. Um, just backing up a bit to one of the first points Kelly mentioned, um, with regard to changing or amending the master plan, uh, the more I think about it, I caution against doing that. Um, you know, if if over time we find that um, certain things aren't applicable or do, then, then perhaps we de-emphasize them. But because of the amount of time that was spent in preparing that document by all the sh shareholders and consultants, I don't think it behooves this group to make changes to that. I think that that should be a guiding document from which we operate. And again, if, if, if something comes up in the future where, where it's incongruous with the mission or what needs to be done, we, then we de-emphasize that particular element. But we, we sh I don't think we should be changing it in one, in one way or the other. My concern with changing it, Kelly, is I mean, by statute, that, that report gets adopted by the planning board. So it, it's by statute and, and it goes to the state as being adopted by the planning board. And I think they weigh in as well, but the board of selectmen, I don't think by statute, but they certainly adopted it as well. And so I don't know how you can amend, formally amend it so, uh, without yeah, going I, through that process. And I think I kind of thinking more with John with what you were saying, I, I agree. So I think John with what you were saying, I, I think, cause I was trying to think of why would we do it? Like where, where does it, what use case would we actually do this that it would make sense because it was more for me it was just sort of kind of having a window open rather than saying we can't and i 
I don't see one because even if you think about, you know, Stan, to your point, you know, Hugh projects going on that we, biggest one we've ever had. Yeah. So it still master it still fits into the structure of what the master plan is, right? It's just a, uh, you know, looking at it, interpret. You know, we're we're that it's in the it's in the plan. You can make right. it fit. So I, sure. I I don't feel strongly on being able to do the you know or this group this committee being able to do the amendments. I, and, and I think okay. you know we can take care of that just as we annotate each of the strategies as we go along. For example, some of the strategies may no longer be applicable, and we just note that. We don't have to amend anything. No. We just say the strategy yeah. was superseded by other activities and is no longer pertinent. You know. Uh, well, yeah. I, I would also just also just say, um, you know, look at you guys as like the first sort of springboard for when we start another master plan process. Um, you'll kind of be the first people I would think uh, any consultant we bring on board would want to talk to to say what's working in the current master plan. What should we have prioritize maybe that we didn't. And so I think this committee's opportunity to sort of, uh, you know, change things, so to speak, might be in the next iteration of the master plan when we do a new one altogether uh, versus changing the existing one. That, that would be my this thought. Is, this is Sean. My, my thought is on page 10 of it, it says the planning board is responsible for adopting, amending, and updating over time. So I think it's within the realm of the planning board and we can make recommendations to the planning board as, as our own board. All right. So that's what, so for this, for us to say, as this committee, does anyone, sounds like we're all saying the same thing yep. at this point, right? So uh, does anyone feel strongly that we should be able to, uh, to amend it? Does anyone like the idea no, anymore? No, okay. Kelly, I, I, I just like to add that I, I think the operative word for this committee is advisory. And, um, you know, I, I, that's the word we keep in the forefront uh, of our, uh, our work. We're uh, uh, about to talk to uh, city uh, agent, uh, town agents and having conversations about uh, what we think is important. And I have a feeling they'll say, oh yeah, that's important to me too. And it's a matter of making sure things that are important to us as citizens don't fall through the cracks. Um, that's what this committee means to me. Like Relative that. to the big projects, like you know, Royal Crest is our favorite example to use, right next to my neighborhood. Is there a reason, or is there a chance that there's things that are in the master plan that are critical path? There, that they're dependency items for some other initiatives that are being more larger, newer things that are being explored to understand some things that we might be looking at master plan in a vacuum and saying, not such a high priority, but if it's going to be critical path to be enabling something that's being pursued, just to kind of understand that, um, you know, some things are going to happen because they're part of a much larger picture. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, for example, I could imagine something in transportation about Route 114 that would certainly, you know, be affected by or be part of something that would happen at Royal Crest because that's going to be a major yep. part of what that yep. activity is all about is transportation, access to 114, what the traffic means, all that. So, you know, it's up to you, John. There may be one of those strategies may involve that. And well, that so uh, big picture back and on a bit here relative to when, when you brought up the fact that there's like these two mega projects, for lack of a better term. Um, and we're, we're, we're serving on an advisory level here. Um, so when those two projects are being developed and reviewed by planning board and both parties, who is the responsible party for making sure that it's adhering to, um, what master plan, you know, is that, are we, are, or do we assume planning board that's on planning board's docket? Or do we, and I don't want to say we're looking over their, do we look over their shoulder, for lack of a better term, uh, to ensure that that's the case, or that, that's, that's, that's all on planning board. And, and John, that's one of those things that looking at the, the kind of the, I forget what it's phrased in here, is kind of the, the report ratings, right? Because that over, is a, just thinking of myself as a citizen, when I vote on the you know, town meeting, you go to vote on something, or you hear someone said, this fits to the master plan, this doesn't, strategies in there. I mean, the master plan is we all are very, 
where now? Has 130 things. And to likely think something is all positive, that's unrealistic. Nothing's going to be all negative either. Right. And some of the some things will be non-impact. That's you know kind of the, the other piece that we were that we were talking about last time that we, we didn't reach agreement on is you know, is there that concept of rating, you know, and we need to figure out the criteria, but for those projects, you know, does this body have a responsibility of saying, you know, positive, negative, you know, neutral for each strategy against you know, large projects? I think that I think that's what you were talking about. I think that's because I think that's missing. I've never seen that anywhere for the whole plan. I, anytime I've ever seen it, it's either, oh, it's a strategy in there or it's not. Well, what about everything else, right? As if someone who's voting as a citizen in a town meeting, I'd like to see a big picture against the plan as one data point. And if I can- I see George, has a, I see George has a hand raised. If, uh, George? I'm sorry. You know, I, I did that part as an experiment to find what happens when I press the raise hand button. So you see it, huh? <laughs> I did, right, we anyway. do see it, small. We've spent quite a bit of time now over a couple of meetings talking about our mission statement. And I was, I, I, uh, since the last meeting, I went back and I looked at, at the file that Andrew sent out. Um, where one of the first attachments we got was mission statement and duties. And the leading paragraph is mission statement and it's four lines long. And I think it's got the, the important words in there. It has advisory body, it has prioritized master plan, has recommendations for implementation and funding. So my question is, what's the matter with that mission statement? I, I think it's, you know, it's not real specific, but a mission statement shouldn't be real specific. Um, I realize that, that you probably don't have this document open in front of you, so you can't see what I'm talking about. But it, no, it's, it's, said, it's actually it's linked to, lines. it's linked to from within the agenda. So everybody should, and anybody listening should be able to open it up. It's, it's part of it. And yeah, I think the mission, I think we are all saying the mission statement is good. No one wants to change well, the mission statement that so came from the planning board. Yeah. Well, okay. So we're done discussing the mission statement for this committee. Is that it's now down to duties, right? It's like, to your point, those are high level. Well, what does that mean for the rest of us? Well, how, what are we actually doing? I think is the, Next in, that in that regard, I do think um, an opportunity to, and I don't know how you qualify which are big projects versus not big projects, yeah, but yeah. I do think the opportunity to uh, review that and, and add comment if, if, if we see it early enough in the process would be advantageous. I mean, I'm just thinking of um, the Amazon project, right? And if somebody's on an open space subcommittee that we have here, they would love the opportunity to try to make an, have an opportunity to, to add to that or, or, or make some suggestions. Uh, obviously, it's an advisor at advisory level, but um, but I think the boards might want that advice or, or or direction. And to your point, John, what you and I talked about you know, last the other day about transportation, maybe not re truly relevant, but you know if it's about lighting of crosswalks and you know and those types of things, like for Royal Crest again, um, or for the the big um, Amazon initiative, make sure there's these things in the master plan that could be highly applicable as part of the scope of these larger things um, to not miss that, we miss that window, like Sean said. Exactly, you know, you know Royal, again, I'll just throw out Royal Crest because of the multiple components that are theoretically part of it at this juncture. Um, one of the master plan elements was regional transportation. Um, how does that tie into Royal Crest? Does that, does that present an opportunity to, Add, add a public transportation element that doesn't exist today and who and, and i'm not you know whether that's something planning board enacts or another committee town enacts or if that's something that falls on our shoulders as an advisory role do we say hey while we're at it we do we want to should we should whoever the stakeholder be considering this as an element well so let me let me just say that a little bit same thing a little bit differently, John. So we could take, for each of our, in each of our areas, we could take the strategies and we could say, we could look at them as they might apply to uh, Sean's, Sean's term, large projects, right? And where we think there are strategies that might be applicable to say Royal Crest, we could forward those or, or mention those or identify those to uh, whomever, the planning board, someone, and say, hey, these are strategies we're already working on in the master plan for you know, other purposes. Uh, 
you might want to think about them as far as the new project goes, right? Mm -hmm. And and I'm 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 guessing that some of that is probably already being done. Is that true, Gene? So it's part of the review process and we're early in the stage, but they've submitted a traffic study that has a transportation demand management plan on the last page. So the link of the 11.5 agenda, you'll see a presentation of their traffic study, which kind of condenses it down to presentation mode. It's the very last screen. And so they are proposing to improve shuttle service between Merrimack joining the um, PMD, which would help them improve transportation to and from the site if, if, if demand is there. They've got car share spaces, they've got bike racks, they've got all kinds of things in their management plan for transportation. At, at this point, that will get sent out to our peer reviewer that will come on and work as a consultant for the town who may better inform that plan and, and suggest other means that could help improve traffic with the long route 114. And also, I'm not sure if this group's aware or not, but we we are in the midst of a Route 114 improvement project that is being conducted by Mass DOT. And this development has taken that into consideration and Mass DOT has taken this development into their consideration in designing that improvement plan. And so there's a lot of moving parts associated with this project. Hmm. And I think the last piece of the puzzle is, you know, to like that, that project, because John alluded to having some awareness of that, you know, how does that compare with the, all the things that are in the master plan? Yep, that, that's kind of wrapped in there. It's going to be taken care of. So making sure we're not kind of prioritizing things that, again, that are already organically going to happen. And it, it, just back to George, to your point of, just to summarize what I think I heard you said, George, is why are we beating this dead horse when there's a nice mission statement here already? Um, I mean, and it go back, it, the mission statement does talk about our public education of the master plan process, right? So what we're talking about here, this 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 report, the, you know, whatever we want to call it, the report of, you know, uh, of any large project, we'd have to define what that is. Um, it would just be one of those pieces of public education, right? This is one of our methods of doing it, if it if it's something we chose to do. Um, I guess I'm, kind of, I'm saying that, that we could if we choose to do it, so we could kind of move off to George's point, move off this discussion of mission and duties. <laughs> right, because it's just, it's just one more of our methods, right? Whether we've talked about stakes, you know, steins in a yard, or do we, you know, actually put something out where, you know, 130 positive negatives, neutrals. Um, it's just one more method of public education. And a lot more work, I think, to it, but we'd have to decide it was something we wanted to do. Yep. Yeah, okay, I think we're good. So, all right. So, what is that? So, we've we've put. I think you know Andrew and a couple of us put the the duty. Sort of, well, how do we put this to bed and call it finished? So, I think we all. No, nobody likes the idea of allowing for asking or allowing for amendments. So, I think that's off the table. Do we just want to talk about? Um, the concept of doing those reports and you have to maybe we do you forget how to define which ones we do the reports for is just part of our public education and let's move on just one because we will have many methods of public education just one of them what do we think uh, what do we need to do here for the public education discussion you mean no i'm just trying to how do we close out and move on on this right like that's i i, I think it sounds like people are in general agreement so i don't Gene, unless you disagree, I, I think we can just sort of just leave it be. I don't think there has to be any action taken per se, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I just got a little confused. I, Kelly, what I, what I understand is there's consensus in terms of not amending the um, master plan. And that the yes. second component that you talked about is what formal process could be put in place in terms of having applicants come before this board if you deemed them to be substantial. Or no? No, I don't think we're talking about having them come before this board. Right. Okay. I, I think that I, I don't think that was something that we wanted to do or we talked about. So, yeah, so I, I remember that kind of got put aside at the last meeting or so to have some type of process. So in terms of the ability for you guys to weigh in on these and kind of rate whether they're consistent with the master plan, is that what you're trying to put to bed? Yes. Yes. Okay. Is, is there consensus that 
you aren't going to have a role in that process or no? No, there's not consensus on that. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I uh, I'll, I'll just add at this point, I, I don't think that's our role. Uh, I think as an advisory committee, um, the idea of weighing in um, is not our role. Um, if someone asks, that would be nice, but um, th that's certainly not an expectation we should have. Okay. So how does anybody, anybody else feel that way, that we shouldn't do it? So do you feel, I guess the process is there, right? Kelly, you're more familiar than most, but the planning board post agenda, all the agenda items are linked to all the meeting material. I know it takes a lot of time to go through it all and get up to speed, but everybody here has the information available and everybody here can make comment to a planning board. I mean, right. You can individually or collectively, I guess, make a comment. Um, and the information is there. So I, I don't think that would put kind of the burden on any applicant to come. I am total agreement not to have them go before more people, but right. it's public information. You all have it. You can all assess it. Yeah, because we can yeah, have I mean, that information and look at it and then do a, a, a right. I think you, you, I think you just muted yourself. Kelly, or... you muted. Your daughter muted you. <laughs> Kelly, my concern um, in terms of that for yourself. My kids want to mute me all the time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Kelly, my concern for, about that in particular for yourself is if you are listening to an application on the planning board, I'm not sure it would be appropriate for you to participate in making a recommendation for this group or comment. Right. Oh. So that would be concerning. And I think, Andrew, maybe you'd want to talk to Suzanne to see. Yeah, I'm not sure how that would play out. I mean, um... And, and in addition, I guess, Sean, in terms of conservation, because Rural Crest is going to go to conservation as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess that's, it would be a big question, right? Can we? I mean, that would take it off the, I mean, we're here as representatives from those boards. Right. Right, so. But but someone else from the, from the committee could, you know, I don't know, make a comment or, you know, provide some input, like I could yeah. do that. Yeah, but you I guess that was my idea wanna... of taking the lion's share of the work, though, right? Like, for example, I'm on yeah. the planning board, so I will be attending all of those. So I would think I would be, you know, in addition to anyone else who wants to look at the public information, I would have gone through it all as well and probably, you know, maybe could highlight and stuff. But if not, if that's not appropriate or not something I could do, then I think that. Well, you, could, the other thing is you, you wouldn't want to, like, Stan, if you were going to make a public comment at the planning board, in regards to how well or how not well the Royal Crest current plans uh, coincide with the master plan, you would be doing so as sort of a individual resident. You wouldn't want to right. do it as a member. You wouldn't want to do it representing the master plan implementation committee. Correct. Because that would require saying, Stan, we we all agree, and there's going to be a vote taken. Everybody agrees yeah. that Stan's going to be the vessel through which you're going to deliver your message, and that's that's a whole other thing. Um, right. And that also creates a problem for Kelly, because if Kelly participates in that vote, then she's sort of also, you know what I mean? That's back to the issue of whether or not it's appropriate for someone who already sits on the board that is considering right. the project to, from another angle, comment on it. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I, I guess, guess I would take that further. It not only participate on a vote, but participate in the deliberations of the committee. Yeah. So, so uh, I have some thoughts on that. I, I think, um, so for instance, let's just say it's the Con common Amazon and Amazon comes in front of us with their notice of intent, and I become aware of that. And I share with you guys, hey, listen, this is a big project, and you know I'm on the uh, open trails committee uh, for this, for, for or as a subcommittee of this group. You know, I see an opportunity here. What do you guys think? And then either I or somebody else during the open meeting uh, bring up the fact that you know our committee has some thoughts on things that could be improved. Um, I, I don't think ethically. I don't think there's a conflict of interest there. I don't think there's any ethical issues there. Um, certainly when I vote, I, I will vote as a, as a conservation commissioner, not a member of this group, but I don't, I don't think the opportunity to comment um, causes a conflict, and I think it's actually an opportunity. Well, I, I think the bottom line is we'd probably, um, I, I don't think it hurts to just, uh, for Gene and I to talk to Suzanne, our town council, just to make sure there's no Legal or ethical issue, and I agree, Sean, yeah. that you know, on the surface, uh, it doesn't seem like there should be an issue. Um, and and you know, I, I want you guys to be able to comment on these things from the perspective of 
whether or not they, uh, you know, these projects are in line with the master plan. So um, I, I think you and I should just consult with the yeah. town council. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that yeah. way we know one way or the other, right? Yeah. These, individual boards. these boards appointed them to be their representative on this committee, so that might change things enough. I'm, I'm just not sure, so we should talk about it. And, as yeah, much right. as I don't want to carry this agenda item, I'm afraid we might have to. <laughs> All right, so let's do that. So that, I think that's the only outstanding item at this point, right, at this level. So um, if we can do that, and then we'll put that, hopefully, Andrew, you can find here one way or the other, especially if it's sure. a no-go, right? Like we can't, that it's, you know, given our representative other boards that we cannot weigh in on, you know, a, a judgment call on if different strategies meet the plan or not, right? Then we know we can't, so we move on figure another way, you know, another communication form. Okay. okay. We're good. All right. Uh, next on the list, a uh, communication plan. So speaking of the communication plan, um, just to let people know where that stands, I've had a conversation early, right, right after our last meeting um, with uh, Chris Nobly, I'd put together a framework, excuse me, I'd put together like a, a very high level, just kind of straw man framework of, um, what a communication plan, what I was thinking we'd need, you know, to really just kind of, what types of things would we want to communicate? Who would we need to communicate? How would we reach them? Just the really basic things, you know, what methods would we want to use? Um, and then uh, the next step is meeting with Dan, um, Andrew and Sarah, uh, Sarah Brush, I believe is her name, um, to really kind of go, all right, what should we be doing with the town and kind of connect and make, you know, anything that we're thinking works with the, the town. And I, I didn't link to the spreadsheet that I put together because it was more just kind of notes versus anything worthy of sharing and wasting the larger group's time. So it was just kind of my thoughts that I put down to, for a meeting. So that's where that is. Okay. Um, anybody else have any other comments on communication plan or public education? Well, I'm no. sorry, Kelly, I missed. Did you say you have a draft document or? No, I do not have a draft. Do no, you have I do these not. Thoughts. I mean, what what is the question you're asking us? I, I was not asking a question. Um, I was oh. just letting you know. Uh, I was giving you an update, and then I asked if you had any um, thoughts or questions about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So then on to uh, so if no, then on to new. Does anyone have any new business? The only thing that I heard as we were discussing um, at the very, very beginning was um, the cadence and lengths of meetings, given the fact we are running up against, uh, we will, within this time slot, we'll constantly run up against the school committee. I'm not saying we want to have extremely long meetings, um, but th this time slot does lead to the needing to clear the air by 6.30 for the school committee meetings that start at 7. Um, I think Stan had mentioned the idea of rather than meeting once a month, um, might help us with kind of cadence and pushing along. Maybe we go to a more frequent meeting schedule, shorter meetings, but more frequent what we do every two weeks or or some other cadence. Um, I'm kind of thinking you know, we, we started with the once a month just to get our feet under us a little bit. I think maybe we go to every, I, I don't know what the right cadence is, but shortening them to every two weeks or three weeks so we can start making a little bit more progress and pushing along. I don't know what anyone else's thoughts are there. I, my personal I feeling is that, that for the time being, maybe having meetings at a little bit higher frequency, like every two weeks, might be good so we can just exchange ideas. Um, and then, you know, after we get, you know, into the late winter or early spring, maybe we go back to monthly and that would be okay if we're just doing stuff. But I'm, I sort of feel like I need to talk to people or hear people uh, express ideas more frequently it makes me nervous when I'm when I have to wait a month to hear anything. So. All right. Does anyone not want to go to every two weeks? Does anyone not like the idea? <laughs> no, that, no, no, that, no, no, go ahead. No, go that, ahead, Jay, Jay. You're a member. I want you to I want you to speak your mind. Go ahead. I think that's a uh, a good idea. And if we um, uh, you, you know look at a date and uh, for our next meeting, some of us will have had uh, the sit downs with the uh, uh, town uh, town leaders and uh, can give the other groups an idea of how those conversations went and that would be a, uh, a, a you know a productive thing to get done in the next meeting 
All right. Anyone against doing every two weeks? I'm not hearing any against. If we go to every two weeks, do we? Does that make sense to stick with the same day and time? Do we stick with Thursdays at this hey, time, or is it bad? Only, what do we do? My only request: is if we go to more, if we go to a, a higher frequency, that we look at the possibility of doing it at a later time of the day, just because I'm 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 working five. It is. I take off early for these meetings. So. All right. So later is better for you. That's fine. That's fine for me. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Let's. You know. Me too. Better for me too. Okay. Um. I don't know what our our options are. I don't know, Andrew, if we need to work with Cam to find kind of where there's open windows yeah. for meetings, and maybe we can find out what so, those are and send them out. Well, let's just. Uh, I can do a quick look right here if you want to try to settle on the next. I, I, you know, I, here's what I would say. I don't know that we should definitively right now say, okay, it's going to be every two weeks on this day right now. Um, going, so speaking from a staff perspective, I'm just going to say, you know, uh, Stan mentioned it before, we're going into budget season. We've got multiple holidays coming up. I just, you know, Jean herself has two meetings already a, a month through planning board that she's administering. So I just don't want to, from the perspective of helping to administer these meetings, I just don't want to, um, you know, overload us. Um, but I'm certainly happy to try to meet in two weeks um, and then maybe revisit and just at that time talk again to see if, again, we need to meet in another two weeks. Is, is, yeah, is it okay that, we go on more of a see, see how it works out sort of um, schedule? Yeah, I think the cadence, well, I'll speak for myself. Having a, a defined cadence helps a lot just for scheduling life. So I, I like the idea of having a defined cadence personally for scheduling work and family or my daughter on my lap. Um, <laughs> but, so if we, okay. if, we did, um, if we did two weeks and two weeks, that would be December 3rd and December 17th. And if we tried seven o'clock to see if that okay. would work. December 3rd is off the table. Um, wait, I'm sorry, December 3rd. Um, um, Andrew, December second is the downtown plan presentation. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, the sorry? downtown improvement master plan meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, September second at six thirty. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and I hope Wednesday you're all September. going to attend. Um, Andrew, could I make a, a suggestion that um, um, once you know that some of us have had these meetings with. Uh, um with town uh, agents um that we have something to report and then you could reach out to the committee and say hey we have a couple of committees who have had conversation let's it's uh time to get uh to get together and give us a range of five days sure we can do that um right. and you would I, know what work we got done and you could say yeah there's enough to have enough there's enough work done to have a meeting and uh, obviously we were leaving it flexible and then you would send out some suggestions to us. I would suggest we just need to get something on the calendar so we have it, right? There's always that when there's a deadline, we get stuff done. Um, I don't know how anybody else feels, right? So maybe if that week, next week, the week of the fourth, that third, fourth is too hard. I guess it's the week of the 30th with Thanksgiving coming up. Maybe we push right. to, the, to do it three weeks and just say the week of December 7th, we find one there somewhere, right? We, we need to keep right. meeting. We need, a, we need to keep meeting to, to push the chain along. I don't know yeah. anyone else feels it. We feel like we need to, we need to dig in. And we, we talked earlier about the pressure of getting to the board of selectmen with, with updates and, and priorities and, like we need to, we need to get there. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I think we should do something. I think we should pick a day then, or let Andrew okay. be during that week for us and try to yeah. find a date. So I would say, how do, how does Tuesday, December eighth work for people? Sounds good. Sounds, sounds good. Uh, let me just look at my calendar. Um, so, and yeah. uh, Gene, the ZBA is that night, but they would be on the Gov channel, correct? They should be on the Gov channel. Yeah. Okay, so there shouldn't be a conflict there. So let's there say you're picking the eighth rather than the tenth to stand at Thursday. Uh, the reason is, I had a reason. Well, there's no, case. there's no school committee on the tenth because we got off Thursdays because oh, it was school CPC, committee. We were going CPC to. is on the tenth at seven o'clock, oh. and they would be on this channel, right, Jean? Yes. Okay. But if this so, one is not at five, and we're meeting more frequently, it should be over before seven. I'm just thinking it gets two more days in for the pocket meeting. 
So we talked about movie, um, Gene, in the day that five was too early for some people. Oh, okay. That seven, that seven people Sorry. Started what allowing would, for what, to be done with work and things what, like that. So because we have to get off, like, and we have to settle this. What would people would what would people yeah what would people rather do? Uh, would it be um, the eighth at you know any time really? It could be six, seven, just to make it a little later for John's request, or it would have to be five p.m. on Thursday the tenth. I can do either. I'd prefer the eighth, but either. I prefer I can the do eighth. Either day. I, I, can, do I can do either, but prefer eight, eighth later in the afternoon, or like okay. seven o'clock, whatever. I prefer later. Seven, seven, eight. Eighth works great for me. Can we do six o'clock? Can I go to anybody in a six? I can yes. do a six. Yeah, how about, it's John, John, John. John, does that work for you? Does that allow you to get home, John? Six okay. o'clock, the eighth. Uh, the eighth and six. Okay. Uh, is that, does that work for you, Gene? And can we make that work? Yep. All right. <laughs> okay, we'll get that on the calendar and go from there. All okay. right. All right. Are we done now? I we are done. Can I just get a motion to, uh, or Kelly, do you want to round up a motion to adjourn? Sure. I get a motion to adjourn, please. A motion to, I make a motion to adjourn. Second to see John. Second. 46, honey. I don't want to know how old I was. All right. So uh, roll call vote. John. Stan, yes. Yes. Yeah. John, yes. Uh, James. Yes. George. Yes. John. Yes. Holly. Yes. Meredith. Yes. All right. And Kelly, yes. 46 year old, I think. Okay. Andrew. Yes. Oh, no, I was waving goodbye. Uh, <laughs> <all right. laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for a good meeting. Have a great evening.